Hey everybody, this is Robert Burke, and today I would like to give a, a brief overview on our upcoming trick-taking card game called Moons. First thing I need to say is what you're seeing here is a prototype. These are prototype components. I am not a graphic designer. I did the graphic design here. So these are not what the final product is going to look like. We have a professional graphic designer who's actually going to make them look good. But for the purposes of uh, the playtesting that we've been doing and for the purposes of showing you how the game plays, this, is, this will suffice. Uh, but please know this is not the final look of, of the game. So the game uh, Moons, you'll see there are four different types of tokens in the game, and that is the object of the game, is you're trying to win tokens uh, by winning tricks, uh, by doing other things within the game to gain tokens. Uh, you are going to win at the end based on the tokens that you collect. They are worth different point values. So if you have one token, that is worth one point. If you have a set of three or more of a single kind, so if I had, for example, one three Uranus tokens, those would be worth two VP each, so that would be six points. If I won four and I counted that as a set, that would be eight points. The most valuable is to get a set of four different. So if I get one of each of these tokens at the end of the game, that set is worth 10 victory points. So during the game, you're really trying to maximize your score by making sure you win or trade or steal the tokens that you need to have the maximum combination of sets at the end of the game. So it's a trick-taking game, but it's got this set collection element to it. Um, and the sets that you are collecting are based on the tricks that you win and, and how you trade your tokens and that kind of thing. So it's a little bit unique in that regard. So the deck of moons are, there's 60 different cards in a, in a deck of moons. And all the cards are going to have a suit. The suit is the planet that the moon orbits. Right, and then you are going to have the actual moon. And these are actual NASA images of the moons of our solar system uh, that they have taken with different missions uh, throughout the decade. So that's pretty cool. So when you're looking at these cards, you're looking at actual images of the moons. And it's got the name there. So uh, it's not an educational game. It was not developed as an educational game. It was developed as a trick-taking game. However, it definitely has a, a great educational element because as you play the game, you are going to learn the different names of the moons, what planet they're associated with that they orbit, and then what that moon actually looks like as well. So, so that's a pretty cool thing. All right, so how do you play? So first of all, you're going to deal the whole deck out to all the players. There are 60 cards in the deck. So 60 is divisible equally for between two and six players. So it's going to be, right now, it's between three and six players, but we're very close to having it work with two players with a little bit of uh, rules changes. So it may end up being between two and six players. So if you have six players and you deal out the whole deck, every player will have 10 cards. If there's five players, every player will have 12 cards and so on. So the smaller the number of players, the mo more cards each player is going to have for, for each round. So let's say uh, if we're in a five player game, let me deal 12 cards to myself. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So the first thing a player is gonna do is they're gonna look at their hand and they're probably going to arrange their hands by suit. And every suit uh, that has numbers ranges Every suit that has numbers ranges from 1 to 13. Uh, sorry, not 13, 14. So 14 is the highest number that, that you can have. So in the game, high numbers are very important to win tricks, but also low numbers are important because low numbers can also win you tokens as well. So that is something to consider. So I've got a pretty decent hand here. I've got three Uranus cards. I've got two Neptune cards. I've got some Saturn cards. And I've got some Jupiter cards. 
So the first choice you're going to have to make is all players need to pick three cards from their hand and lay them face up in front of them in their, into a tableau. All right. The tableau is not those cards that you get rid of are never going to be played. No other player can play on them or steal them or anything. But that tableau is important. It does one of two things. First of all, it enables you to short suit yourself. Since you can win tokens by playing the low offsuit card, and in moons you do have to follow suit. All right, so if somebody played uh, a Uranus card, I would have to play one of these cards. I can I can't play offsuit unless I don't have one of the cards that led. So if I don't have a card that led, I can play offsuit. And if I play the lowest number offsuit, like this is a great one. I would win a token that matches the suit of the card that I played. So let's say I did not have, let's say I put all three of these Uranus cards in my tableau. I have short suited myself on Uranus. I have no Uranus cards. So let's say a player played a Uranus card. Now, since I don't have one, I can play any card I want. I would probably want to play this one Saturn card. All right, so when I play that, if I end up being the lowest off suit, I get to take the associated token, so I would take a Saturn token. All right. If it is tied for the lowest off suit, like if somebody else played the one Jupiter card, then neither of us would get a token. So that's something to keep in mind as well. However, uh, what you play in your tableau is important as well because when you win a trick, you are going to be able to take a token that matches any one of the cards that you played in your tableau. So if I did this to short suit myself, it's good, it's setting me up to, to play off suit cards. However, when I win a trick, I have to take a Uranus token because that's all I placed down. Where uh, if I played this instead, let's say I played a Neptune card and a Uranus card, and let's say I play a Saturn card as well. All right. So if I've played these three, whenever I win a trick now, I have my choice of any one of these tokens. I could take a Saturn token or a Uranus token or a Neptune token. And that can be very important because remember, you are going to score more points for getting sets. So when you're trying to complete a set, having the option to take a planet token that you need to complete a set can be very, very important. So right off the bat, you're gonna be faced with a decision about what cards you're gonna place in your tableau. Are you gonna to try to short suit yourself or are you going to try to increase your options for what planet tokens you can take? Or hopefully maybe you can get lucky and do a little bit of both. All right. So that makes the game a little bit uh, unique as well, is, is having that decision point at the beginning uh, to try and see how you're going to get the most tokens during that round. So the ways you get tokens, if you win a trick, you can take a token that matches any of the, of the uh, planets that are in your tableau. If you play offsuit, you get a token if you are the lowest offsuit card that was played in that trick, but it's gotta match the card that you played. Whoever wins the most tricks in a whole round, so after everybody plays all their cards, whoever has won the most tricks can take any planet token of their choice. So if you do that, that's a very good way for you to complete sets is by having the most tricks. If you have not taken any tricks in a round, you've taken zero, uh, you can take a planet token that matches any of the planets in your tableau. So that's a way, so if you really, you know, you don't want to, you know, just win one trick necessarily, you might want to try to play the low offsuit cards, right, to try and gain tokens by playing low offsuit cards, and then end up with no tricks and get to take another token. Sometimes that may work out better for you uh, than trying to win tricks. So that's kind of a decision point you have to make. Are you gonna try to win tricks to gain tokens? Or are you gonna try to play low uh, and then maybe end up with no tricks and get a bonus token at the end? Or are you gonna try to split it in the middle somewhere? But again, it's not just about getting the tokens, it's about getting the right combination of tokens. All right, so those are the, the cards. There are four special cards I wanna show you that have special rules in the game that mix it up a little bit more. So this one is Deimos. There are two uh, moons, 
Mars moons here, Deimos and Phobos. Now there's no text on these yet uh, because these are prototypes. So as we change the rules and tweak it and stuff, we're not constantly updating stuff. So when the rules finalize, that will be right on the card to make these special cards very easy to recognize and remember. All right, so I want to make that very clear. So Deimos, uh, the Deimos card is unique because when somebody plays a Deimos card, uh, it's got to be played off suit, right? Uh, when they play that, it means nobody gets any tricks, or not tricks, nobody gets any tokens that round. So whoever played the had played the high card that was led does not get a, he still wins the trick, gets the cards, but cannot take a token. Whoever played the low offsuit card also does not get a token. So this is a way to stop other players uh, from getting tokens in a round if you have nothing better to play. Phobos is the other Mars moon, and this allows you to trade a token. So, again, you have to play this. Uh, you, you have to play this if you can't play what led. You can play this card if you have it, because it's a, uh, an offsuit card. But it's got no number. So these Mars moons, you cannot win a token with these cards. However, they give you other benefits. So Demo says nobody can take any tokens. And Phobos lets me trade any token that I've won with a token that another player has won. So that is a great way uh, to maybe break up a set of another player, hopefully the player who's leading or you think is leading, and add a token to your set uh, that helps you get more points at the end of the game. So that's Phobos. Luna. Luna is our, our moon, the Earth's moon. And what Luna does is freezes the trick. So. If somebody played a 14 and you could not play, you could not follow suit, you could play Luna and freeze that trick. That means nobody wins that trick, nobody gets any tokens on that trick. You also, since you've played Luna, get to lead the next trick. So you want to play Luna when you have a high, another high card in your hand. So if you play Luna and freeze the trick and then lead with a high card, if you win that second trick, you get both of those tricks. So those whoever has the most tricks at the end of a round is going to get a bonus token of their choice. They can pick any one they want. All right. So getting two tricks is a good thing. Um, however, when they're, they're they're also going to get to take any token they want when they win those two tricks after playing Luna. So instead of having to match it to their tableau, they can take any token they want, and they're going to be. Uh, two tricks closer to maybe winning the most tricks in that round and they'll get to take another one. So that's Luna. But you got to be careful, remember? Because if you play Luna before Deimos has come out and you play Luna and freeze the deck and then the second round you think you're going to win it and if Deimos hasn't been played and it gets played, then you're not going to win any tokens, right? So you won't, you won't have that token of choice uh, that you would get without Demos being played. So something to consider. So you always have to be aware of what has been played and what hasn't been played and what people have played to their tableau. So there's perfect information here. All the cards are dealt to every player. So you're, everybody has the same information on what's been played and what's in the tableaus. Last one is Sharon. Uh, this is a moon of Pluto, which is actually not a planet. That's why we don't have a planet here, a uh, planet suit right here. But Sharon has to be played off suit as well. And when you play that, it just allows you to steal a token from another player and add it to your collection. So again, hopefully that's a way for you to, you know, uh, catch up uh, to a player who may you think may be leading the game. All right. So that's basically uh, how Moons plays. You are going to play one card at a time. Uh, all players must follow suit if they can. If they cannot, they can play any card. Highest, uh, highest number wins, uh, that's of the suit that was led with. Lowest off suit wins a token of the suit uh, that, that they played. If there is a tie for the lowest offsuit card, nobody gets a token. The winner of the trick gets to take a token of any planet that matches their tableau, any token that matches a planet in their tableau. Uh, the winner of a round gets to take any token they wish, regardless of what's in their tableau. And if you have taken no tricks in a round, 
then you get to take a token that matches one of the planets in your tableau. Uh, in addition, we've got those four cards that mix things up a little bit that you've got to, to really think about uh, and, and prepare for. So that's basically Moons in a nutshell. You are going to play out, uh, you're going to keep playing until all the tokens are gone. Uh, when one type of token runs out, like let's say all the Uranus tokens have run out, if you have a Ur if you win a Uranus token, then you get nothing. All right, so that's something to keep in mind as well. So the game plays until all the tokens are gone, or until every player has dealt one time, or two times in two and three player games. Uh, when that happens, you take all your tokens, and everybody figures out what how, how they're going to score their tokens. And clearly, they want to do sets of four first, then they want to do sets of the same after that, and then what's ever let what what is ever left over, they score one point for. So whoever has the most points based on this the scoring sheet wins the game, uh, and that's it. That's moons. It's a, a very uh, unique trick taking game. It's very easy to pick up. It plays really fast. Uh, and you're going to learn about the moons of our solar system as you play it. So I hope this overview kind of showed you uh, how the game works. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. Bye.